In today's episode, I'm going to dig deep into the different types of mobile notifications, as well as the options that are available. All the notifications I'm going to cover will use the companion app. There are no additional add-ons or integrations or any other software that has to be installed or services that you've got to go sign up for. None of that. I'm going to cover things such as basic text only push notifications, notifications with images and clickable buttons and mobile text to speech notifications, as well as customizations like changing the notification icon and icon color. Let's get started. Now, I only have Android devices, so all the code and demos that I'm going to show in this video are for Android devices, but most of these things all work on iOS devices as well, sometimes with minor modifications. However, since I don't have any iOS devices, I can't show you the exact differences. So if one of these notifications doesn't work for you on an Apple device, please consult the documentation to see what needs to be modified for your use case. I'll leave a link to that in the description for you. First up, the basic notification that most people start with. We'll create a new automation since I don't really use this notification type anymore. And you'll see why in a bit. Under actions, choose your mobile device, then choose send a notification. Enter a message and a title. Then we'll save this demo and run it. Here you can see the notification pop up on my phone. The icon is the home assistant icon in the default blue color and the title and the message are as we specified. If you tap on it, the notification goes away and the Home Assistant Companion app launches. Now, sometimes you want the notification to be dismissed when you tap on it and other times you may not, but more on that later since that is very important. Next up, let's take a look at my water leak notifications. I have over a dozen of these notifications, one for each leak sensor. These automations will be growing as I've recently purchased a Zeus Titan Z-Wave water shutoff valve, but that's a different video. If you're interested in learning more about that, please be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the little bell to be notified when I publish that video. Unless something changes in the meantime, that video should be coming out next. Anyway, to start this notification section off, you'll see that I'm using a different type of notification. Instead of selecting the device and choosing the send a notification action, I'm calling the notification service. This service is how I handle nearly all my notifications now since it is far more flexible. This first notification is a text to speech notification that will play an audible message on my phone. That's right, you can use your phone as a TTS device. In order to do this, in the message field, you need to enter TTS in all caps and leave the title field blank. Then in the data section, you must include TTS text. Whatever text you enter after that tag is what will be spoken by your phone. If you don't enter anything else, the message will be spoken only when the phone is active and unlocked, and it will play back using whatever volume the music playback is currently set to. However, you can alternately specify a media stream as you see here. You can use alarm stream, which should play back the message regardless if the phone is locked or in use, and it'll play back at whatever the current alarm volume is. Or you can do as shown here, which is to use Alarm Stream Max. Alarm Stream Max, of course, ignores whether or not the phone is locked and plays the message back at max volume. Since something leaking in my house is a pretty big deal, I'm gonna play this back at max volume no matter what's going on. TTL zero and priority high are additional settings that must be used for critical notifications like this as per the documentation. Speaking of documentation, if you're an iOS user, the specific settings needed for your device can be found under the critical notification section of the doc that's linked in the description. Now, what if there are some places where you don't want these messages to play? For example, what if you're at church or some other location where you should not be interrupted under any circumstance? Well, for me, even if I'm at church or the movie theater, I'd still want to know if there's a water leak in my house or if the power's out or if there's a fire or any other critical notification that I've written. But there are a few things that you can do to override this behavior. The most obvious one would be to turn your phone off while you're at those locations. Now, in my testing, I found that the notifications were delivered after I powered my phone back on, 
but it was just a test and my phone was only off for about two minutes or so. So if you're gonna go this route, I would test a bit more thoroughly to ensure that you receive the notifications that you're expecting to. Another thing you could do is to use the alarm stream instead of alarm stream max, and then just make sure to mute your alarm volume when entering church or the movie theater or wherever. However, if it's a location that you go to frequently, the most foolproof method would be to combine the notification with a zone. Just define a zone for church or for the theater or wherever, and then in your automation say, if I'm not at church and I'm not at the movies, send this notification. I've got an example of the reverse of that coming up where I only send the notification if I am home, otherwise I don't send it. We'll take a look at that here in a bit. Now that we've thoroughly dissected that one notification, let's continue on with the rest of this automation. The next notification is the exact same thing, just sent to my wife's phone so we can skip that. Now, I wanted to keep the TTS messages short and to the point, so all I put in there was water leak at home. In order to provide more information though, I'm also sending a text notification. I call the notification service again, and this time the message tells me which sensor detected the water, and the title is water. Now, of course, you can accomplish that with the very first notification that I showed you, but there are a couple differences with this one. Under the data section, you can see that I've specified what icon to use, and I've also specified that it should be red. Again, the next one is a duplicate of this one, except for my wife's phone. Then the final notification is a TTS message to a group of Google Nest minis that I use around the house for TTS announcers. Water leak at home. Next up, let's take a look at my doorbell notification routine. This has grown quite a bit since the last time I showed it here on the channel, and it includes some pretty great mobile notifications. It is a bit lengthy, so get comfy while I step through all this for you. The trigger, of course, is someone ringing the doorbell. Kind of a no-brainer, right? For those of you that are new to the channel, I use Ubiquiti doorbells. They're exposed to Home Assistant via the Unify Protect integration, and all the video from them is fed to my Blue Iris server, which of course is exposed using the Blue Iris integration. I've already made some videos on that stuff, so moving on. The first notification is a TTS notification to the group of Google Nest Minis to announce that someone rang the doorbell. Next, I take a snapshot from the doorbell camera. Then here's where I combine a zone with a mobile notification. If I'm home, then send a TTS notification to my phone. Why am I doing this? I've already got TTS announcers all over the house telling me that someone rang the front doorbell, right? Well, they're sort of all over the house. There's one in my office where I'm filming here in the basement. There's one in the parlor on the main floor. There's one in the kitchen on the main floor. And there's one in the master suite on the second floor. But there are none in the nursery. There's none in the second floor hall bathroom where my son gets his baths. There's none in the garage. There's none on the back deck or the adjacent patio. None in the guest bedroom. None in my basement workshop. You get the idea. So if we're home, notifying our phones is a great way to make sure that we know someone rang the doorbell. Now you're wondering, why bother with all the TTS announcers then if you're just gonna send a message to your phone? Babysitters, man, babysitters. If we're gone and the mailman or UPS or somebody delivers a package and rings the doorbell, I'd like for the babysitter to know it rather than leave it sit out on the porch in the rain. Or what if it's a Girl Scout selling cookies? No way anybody wants to miss the Girl Scout cookies. Moving right along, the next one again is a duplicate, but from my wife's phone. And then we're onto the image notification with actions. Once again, this is something that cannot be done with that first basic notification that I showed you. So here, the message is someone rang the front doorbell and the title is front doorbell. Under data, the first line is sticky true. What's that do? Remember earlier where I mentioned about how when you tap on a notification, it gets dismissed by default? Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I've just tapped on this doorbell notification without expanding it because I'm so conditioned to do that, right? It's the default behavior for any other notification to get more info. Except that if I do that, the button to unlock the front door gets dismissed with the notification. And that button does more than just unlock the door as you'll see in a moment. Sticky true prevents the notification from being dismissed simply by tapping on it. In order to dismiss it, you actually have to swipe it away. Yes, I just learned that while I was preparing to make this video, and no, I'm not too proud to admit that. Damn it, am I happy that I found it, 
because that little annoyance has been driving me nuts ever since I put this automation in place. Okay, back to the info. Next up, you can see that again, I specified an icon. In this case, a doorbell icon, and I color it red. Then I include the image from the snapshot that I took above. You'll remember that I saved it at config www frontdoor.jpg. Well, that's a relative path, of course, not an absolute path, and I can't just send that relative path to my phone in a notification. You have to send the internet accessible URL of the image that you want to display in the notification. Now, of course I've hidden my FQDN, but you can see that the path portion of the URL is WAC local, WAC front door .jpg. WAC local maps to WAC config, WAC www. No, you don't have to have an in-depth understanding of web servers for this, and I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail here. Just trust me, okay? It works. Promise. Next up, I define two actions that I want to be able to take from within the notification on my phone. These will display as text underneath the image that I can tap on. The first action is to open the camera. The type is URI. The title is open camera, which is the text that I want to be displayed under the image. And then the URI is the path to one of my dashboard pages within Home Assistant. So if I click open camera, it'll open that page. The dashboard-admin portion is the name of the dashboard. In case you didn't know, yes, you can have multiple dashboards. Be sure to subscribe for my upcoming Dashboard December series. And WAC Front Doorbell is the name of the page. The other action is called Unlock Door. This needs to be in all caps with no spaces. The title is Unlock Door, which again, is the text that's displayed under the image. Now you're confused, right? How does simply saying Unlock Door Unlock the door. Hold your horses, we'll get there. And we're there. The next action is wait for trigger. I've configured this to wait for two minutes. That means that after the notifications are sent to my wife and I, Home Assistant will wait two minutes for the trigger. What's the trigger? That's this next part here. Mobile app notification action. The event data? Well, would you look at that? It matches what was in the notification. Unlock door in all caps. Very important. Make sure that continue on timeout is not selected. That means that if Home Assistant doesn't receive the unlock door trigger within two minutes after sending those notifications, the actions stop right here. None of the actions below this will be performed. Okay, so what are the rest of the actions then? Well, first up, we're gonna unlock the front door. Then I'm gonna delay for four seconds to give the door time to unlock. And then I'm gonna play a wave file of me saying, come on in via the doorbell speaker on the front doorbell. Now, this may or may not be important for you for your doorbell if you're trying to duplicate this. And again, I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail about it since this video is more about the notifications than the doorbells, but I couldn't get this to work from Home Assistant. I did a bunch of research and the best I could figure out is that it had to do with the way that Home Assistant handles SSL connections versus the way that Ubiquity doorbells handle SSL. Since I have a certificate on my Home Assistant server, I needed a different web server to provide that WAV file. So I slapped IIS on one of my other Windows boxes here and threw the WAV file on there. No, I'm not worried that it's only HTTP and no, I'm not worried that it's IIS. It's only used on my internal network and that's the only file hosted there. So, meh. In order to get that to work, I had to set the content type to music. Next up, I sent a notification to my phone again, this time saying that the front door has been unlocked and I set the icon to be an open lock and colored it red. Same, same for the wife's notification, then a two minute delay, then a bunch of conditions. If the front door contact sensor is closed, meaning that the door is closed, then lock the front door. Else, meaning that the front door is not closed, play a TTS announcement to my announcement group of Nest Minis saying the front door is open and send a message to my phone telling me the door is still open. You'll notice I set the icon to be MDI door open and once again, the color is red. And there you have it. All sorts of mobile notification goodness along with some other random stuff that I didn't wanna just skip over. I know that was a lot to cover and I know I went through it pretty quick, but hey, I'm trying to keep the video shorter for you guys, and I figure that's what the pause button is for. Real quick, do me a solid and whack that like button for me if you learned something from this video. That helps get my pretty thumbnail in front of more eyeballs, 
which helps the channel grow, which motivates me to make more videos for you guys. Now listen, if you're not a fan of pausing videos and typing all this nonsense in by hand, or if you're a nerd and you prefer to work directly with the YAML, you've probably looked in the description of my videos and seen that there's no code there. What gives? A few things. First up, the formatting in the description section, it's horrible. And for YAML, we all know that formatting is everything. Second, the more and more mature this channel gets, the more complex the topics are that I'm covering in my videos. And there's a 5,000 character limit in the description field, meaning that not all the code would even fit in there a good portion of the time, aforementioned formatting issues notwithstanding. All the code from my videos is published on my Patreon page, as well as complete periodic copies of my dashboard, automations, and configuration YAML files. In addition, there are lots of great benefits available, such as early access to ad-free videos, free t-shirts, exclusive giveaways, access to the FHT Discord channel, and more. Benefits are available starting at just three US dollars per month. Stop in, support the channel, get cool stuff. Win-win for everybody. Check the description for a link if you're interested. To all my current patrons, thank you for your support. You guys are the best. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope I was able to teach you something new. I hope you liked today's shirt, and I look forward to seeing all your smiling faces in the next video. Thanks for watching, and until next time, go automate something, will ya?